S T W E B dot net N E T. I'm also on the Amateur Telescope Making E list, and you can subscribe to that E list if you're not already on it. In fact, I would advise it. It's a pretty congenial group of uh, gentle people. Uh, and go to ATM hyphen list dot net and subscribe. It's a well-run list, nice people, different forms of advice, and you really have to sort through what you're being told and consider the sources and determine who you find credible and who you don't and whose methods most comport with the type of mirror you want to make. Uh, but they're a, they're a good group and they, they are helpful and it's interesting and fun to uh, listen to them, to go through it with them. So I would encourage that. Back's tightening up a little bit. It happens. Nothing to be concerned about. Now, what are optical shops made of? Well, there's a variety. I, I heard of one uh, gentleman, and I don't know what type or size mirror he made, but I heard of one gentleman who made it, who made his mirror, did his grinding on an aircraft carrier. Uh, optical shops can get very, very sophisticated also with all sorts of tools and testing devices and uh, optical bench and uh, just whatever you can imagine. Uh, you know, machine generating. And by the way, this is the kind of work that uh, can be done by machine also. Why am I not doing it by machine when I could? That's a good question. I guess this is just the way I'm comfortable with it. I'm fairly proficient at it. As sore as it makes me, I guess it's good exercise also. As I walk around the barrel. The grinding. Generally speaking, if we're grinding a telescope mirror, we start out with the mirror on top, tool on the bottom. I personally prefer using full-size tools and with mirrors wherever it's possible. I have used uh, sub-diameter tools. I'm not crazy about it if I can avoid it. So tool on top, I'm sorry, mirror on top rather. And I start out, generally speaking, with number 60 or number 80 silicon carbide, also known as carborundum. Use a spirometer to determine when my curve is at the right depth. And once the mirror is, car is, is deep enough, once the curve is deep enough, I move on to number 120 silicon carbide, carborundum. And I'll grind with that for, generally speaking, about 45 minutes to help to remove the pits that were left by the number 80 or the number 60 carborundum. Maybe a little longer with the 120 also. Same thing, just keep going around the barrel until, you know, I think I have a relatively smooth curve. I'll then move to number 220. 45 minutes there, 320, 45 minutes there, 500, and that's the last of the carborundum grades that I'll use is 500. I never go below 500. You know, the bigger the number, the smaller the grain. Now, 500 carborundum is roughly equivalent to 25 micron 
aluminum oxide. But carborundum is a really, really coarse grain with very brittle, very sharp edges in the grain. And now I'm done with this. It was on top. See, you get confused. And this is the D side. One of the other things we do is we take, we have a, uh, a sink available. I also have a bucket of water, and you can't see me right now, but I'm just washing off some of the aluminum oxide. Sit tight, I'm going to go over to the sink and wash this off a little better. Right now, we're up to the E side on the F side. Shake this up a little bit. A little aluminum oxide on top. And it is now 2.42 on Saturday, August, Saturday, August 25th, 2007, 2.42 in the afternoon. In any event, carborundum, silicon carbide, is a fairly hard, fairly brittle grain abrasive. It's good for ripping out large amounts of glass quickly. Very good at that. But there comes a point at which you want to stop using the bigger hammer theory and ripping things out real quickly and become a little bit more, exhibit a little more finesse. <coughs> So what you do when that happens is you move over to the uh, aluminum oxide, which is more of a platelet shape, and it still rolls between the uh, glasses, but uh, does so in a lot more gentle manner, and removes some of the pits. I generally start with 22 and a half grit, 22 and a half micron aluminum oxide, not the 25, because the 25 is so close to the 500, I just moved down a little bit. Then I, I knock it down seven and a half grain sizes to 15 uh, micron, which is really two thirds the size of the uh, of the um, 22 and a half. And then I go down another just a little more than two thirds. I go down to nine micron aluminum oxide. And these are all, you know, basically uh, 15 minutes per side, just like I'm doing now. Nine micron aluminum oxide. And then I do what I'm doing now, 5 micron aluminum oxide. My next step is going to be 3 micron aluminum oxide. I could go down to 1 micron, but I don't. Uh, I don't have any. I know where to buy it. There's Universal Photonics out in Long Island. And since I'm in Brewster, New York, that's not such a long haul. And I have bought from them before. I've gone to this shop before and bought from them when I uh, had business out on Long Island. But uh, generally speaking, I'll stop at the three micron. Most people start stop at the uh, five micron if they get that small, and frequently at, at the nine. I've even heard people stopping at 500, or uh, you know, shortly thereafter, and uh, going straight to polishing. I like to pol I like to uh, fine grind for a long, long time. It cuts down somewhat on the polishing time, probably not as much as the time you expend with the fine grinding, but I think ultimately it makes for a, a nicer, cleaner, smoother, 
surface and that's that's what I'm really looking for I really want a very good surface I don't want to run into polishing too fast I certainly know how to polish I'm a good polisher but I, I just prefer to go personally with the fine grinding for me it works it may not work for you it's a matter of personal preference and if you want to you know send me your comments or post them on the ATM list and say I take exception with Mr. O'Reilly, uh, please feel free. You know, this is a free, open, ordered society and discourse is uh, welcome in all areas 